Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie and welcome to Summerween Day 5. Today did not go according to plan, as you will see. I do not finish a book, so I just want to lower your expectations right in the beginning. This one's chaotic and messy and I was nervous about that because it's 4.30 and I'm not even like 30% through a book. But you know what? That's a part of life. It's part of being a reader, so I thought I'd just be transparent and be a mess online. <laughs> so without further ado, here is today as it actually happened. Good morning, welcome to Summerween Day 5. My name is Allie. Today I'm filled with energy because I know I'm going to the beach. I live in Hawaii, but I don't go to the beach too often, probably because I grew up in South Florida and like I used to go to the beach all the time. So it gets old, I'm gonna be so for real. But when it's summertime, I really do crave it. So we usually go down to this beach that's a park and then there's a little stand where you can rent an umbrella. And it's nice cause you could lay there for hours and it, it feels like you're on vacation. I think we're gonna try to go to a new beach that's a little closer to us on the North shore. Today, I don't think there's gonna be umbrellas for sale. So I might just be sitting there getting burnt We'll see by the end of the video. I do plan on bringing This Summer Will Be Different by Carly Fortune with me for a little beach read. And I realized that as I've been doing these Summerween vlogs, I haven't been explaining why I chose the books for each of the prompts. Hopefully it's been kind of obvious so far. This one is because it's five words or more, but also and primarily because it's set in the summer because summer's in the title. Last year when I was on vacation, I read Every Summer After by Carly Fortune and the beach vibes, or I guess it was like a lake, immaculate. And I think it helped because I was like near a body of water. So I'm hoping. Now I do get very distracted at the beach. I like people watching. I love swimming. Can't do that with the book. I like drinking and yapping my mouth. So I am gonna have to try to focus while I'm at the beach today. But let me tell you what this is about. Our main character's name is Lucy and she has a best name Nope, she's a best friend named Bridget. Also, oh my gosh, I did not look in the mirror before I started this. Every year they go to this island called Prince Edward Island. And the first year that Lucy goes, there is like a local dude who shows her a real good time, if you know what I mean. Turns out it's Bridget's brother. So it's some big secret. I don't love best friend's brother or brother's best friend because it's like, you're all adults, who the fuck gives a shit? But the fact that she's kept it a secret now for years because every year they go back and every year she's like, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna fuck my friend's brother. Guess what happens? So I do get that the longer you keep that to yourself, the more it's like, excuse me? In present day, Bridget flees to Toronto a week before her wedding and Lucy, our main character, drops everything to go hang out with her on the island. Her mission is to help Bridget through her crisis and resist the one man she's never been able to, her hot brother. <laughs> but Felix's sparkling eyes and flirty quips have been replaced with something new and Lucy's beginning to wonder just how safe her heart truly is. I also really, really liked the chemistry in here between the characters. This one is childhood best friends to lovers turned second chance romance. So there is a lot of building tension in here because it's like, wow, you can see just how long they truly loved each other. So I'm wondering if we're gonna get some flashbacks or dual timeline. Let's read the first sentence. I'm like so excited. Summer five years ago. Okay, we are getting a flashback. I cut my hands over my eyes so that I could gulp down the view. A sun-drenched bay. That's about to be me very soon. I've got something to say Keeping me up at night Getting electrified Light on dreaming away Opening up the blinds Living outside the lines I'm on the old days and super dosing Hope it is. That's it? That's all, all you wanted to okay, do? Okay, okay. We can take a ride by the tide in the night of the sunshine. All I need to know what you show when we go give a green light. Stay.
are back. We didn't stay too long because I forgot my hat and I didn't want to burn my scalp again like last month. But it was nice. That beach is way rockier than the beaches I tend to like going to because I am a swimmer. In that one, it's like rocks all the way out and I just don't want to risk and scraping my body against them, but it was very pretty. So that's nice. I love adventuring to new places. That being said, guess how many pages of this I read? 16. So I still have, oh, I have a lot to read today. I do have some stuff to talk about already. In that prologue is the first time they meet our lovers. This is obviously like a friends with benefits to lovers story, but even so, like the lust at first sight was a little forced. I love a lusty encounter, but this felt so, I don't know. I just didn't buy it. It wasn't very genuine and I've read some good shit for like strange encounters, if you know what I mean. That sounded alien-like, but you know what? I've also read some pretty good alien encounters. And then at the end of the preface, oh my god, this was, this was... <laughs> See, the thing is, I really like this author, so I know she has it in her to build this up, and this is the first time they've hooked up. It was five years ago, so I'm hoping we get more and more and more. But this thing just made me laugh out loud at the beach with children all around me. She's supposed to be staying at her friend Bridget's house, but Bridget's running late for a day. So she hooks up with this guy, goes to his house, and he's like, oh, what's the address of the place you're staying at? This is after they spent a raucous night together. She tells him, and he's like, oh shit, that's my address. She said, Bridget gave me just three rules for the trip. First of all, why would a friend give her rules for the trip? One, eat your weight in oysters. Ew. I'm not an oyster girl, I'm sorry. Number two, leave the city behind. What kind of a rule is that? Like what? Like you're leaving the city. Just, I don't, I don't get it. And number three, don't fall in love with my brother. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be. Now to be fair, I am not a list girl. There is like a specific sub trope in romances where you have to go down a list or there's a list you have to avoid. Anything with a list, I'm out. I don't like it. Hopefully that's the last we've heard about this dumbass list because it is dumbass list. Who would tell their friend, don't fall in love with my brother that you've never met? I'd be like, excuse me? Also leave the city behind. Okay, obviously. Sorry. <laughs> I'm being a little ferocious and we're only one chapter in. So I think I'll get to the halfway point, give it way more of a chance. I have so much trust in this author. I'm gonna get busy, not like that. You know what book I recently started reading that has a really good premise of like strangers meeting in a bar and kind of hooking up? Swift and Saddled. I actually started this, I'm in the middle of it before Summerween started and I'm really liking it, which is funny because I DNF done and dusted. But I think this encounter was just very well done. Even though I like this author's writing overall better, I think the tension and the believability of these two going to go like make out <laughs> in the darkened hallway was so much steamier than these two actually getting it on and having sex like four times in one night. Interesting how that works. Okay, I'm gonna shut up about it and read. Y'all, I have unfortunate news. First of all, I don't think I like my nails. I don't usually go for pink. I just don't think it looks good on my skin tone. I don't know, that doesn't even matter. What matters is that I don't really like this. I actually did just read a sort of seamy scene. There's been nothing too descriptive, you know, and that's that's fine. So I was thinking maybe that's why things didn't feel that steamy, but we just got a steamy scene in a steamy bathroom. We didn't get too much description, but ooh, it was good. It was good compared to what we've read so far. My problem is, first of all, they keep bringing up the stupid lists and they're making rules. It's hard to keep track because they keep making them up, which I guess is the point. But then her friend was talking about her fiance and then all of a sudden, like right after that sentence, she says, can't forget rule number three, which is don't fall in love with my brother. It's like, you were just talking about your fiance. What does that have to do with your brother? Like, it, I don't know, something's not clicking here. We still don't understand why these two like each other and I'm sure we're gonna get explanation, but we're quarter of the way through the book and I don't get why our two lovers like each other like besides just having sex which is enough for me trust me there's just something not clicking so I don't know what to do I don't want to force myself to read the rest of this but it's like 4 p.m. what am I gonna read <clears throat> I know this is a very very serious problem <laughs> I'm just being so dramatic today oh my god but like I already did my little photo shoot at the beach for the thumbnail come on I fear that I'm just in a bratty mood and I really just don't want to read um I have no idea what to do about it <sighs> One hour later. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie and welcome to Summerween Day 5. All right, I just filmed the intro. Today's a mess. I've come to accept it. I'm feeling a little bit more at ease and accepting that uh, reading is chaotic sometimes. So I think I'm going to gather a few books that I have never started before in differing genres to try to see what kind of mood I'm in. And hopefully tomorrow, this mood is like not here anymore. Also, yes, this is my outfit. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
All right, I've collected a few genres here of books with acceptable length of first chapters. We have a horror, Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. I know this author does more like goofy horror, which I am a big fan of a goofy horror. We have Martyr, large print edition. I've heard such amazing things about this that I'm scared it's gonna be my favorite book of the year, which makes me not want to read it. We've got like a sci-fi fantasy. I hear this is very confusing until you read like the second book, which is a little intimidating. The Whispering Dark, a YA paranormal fantasy. Kill for Me, Kill for You by Steve Kavanaugh. This is a thriller. I hear this is very stressful and I'm kind of scared about that. And then My Dark Romeo, a dark romance, or maybe just a romance. I feel like it's dark because LJ Shen has written it. So I'm gonna read these first chapters and then I'll rank them based on how much I'm enjoying them and how intrigued I am by the plot. Obviously, this isn't to signify how interested I am in this genre. Like, if these suck, it's the author's fault, not the genre's fault, you know what I'm saying? I'm still a brat, I'm sorry. I can't. I need to get a coffee or something. What is wrong with me? Right, I finished reading my chapters. That took way longer than I thought it would, but it did cure me. I feel so excited to read now. I definitely suggest doing that to anyone who's like feeling slumpy. Don't just stop reading. Continue to take little tastes of things until something sounds tasty. I have ranked them on my initial interest to keep reading. At the bottom, we have Kill Me. No. Kill for me, kill for you. In this first chapter is a woman who's following a man. She has a gun and she's planning on killing him. She's clearly been studying his actions, timing things perfectly. She's trying to kill him on a subway, like in between two people. And before she can do it, he looks up at her and he's like, I didn't kill your daughter. I think this is at the bottom, not because I found it disinteresting. Like obviously this is drama, but the fact that her daughter died, who was six years old. And then a week later, apparently her husband died. Sounds horribly depressing. And I think we're gonna go back in time now and like witness that. And I don't know if I wanna deal with that right now. I don't like being stressed out, I really don't. I am though very curious if someone actually did kill her daughter, like ugh, what happened? So I am interested in continuing this, but like compared to the others, this one is the bottom. Then we have Gideon. Um, There's a lot going on in here. It's an entire ecosystem I do not understand. I felt like Charlie Brown truly hearing wah, 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 at some of the things that were written on these pages, but I am so supremely stuck that I'm like, I want to know exactly what all this stuff is. And it made me want to write things down so that I can make like a little encyclopedia for it. High fantasy sometimes does that to me. Like when I'm in a slump, sometimes I reach for something super complicated so that I can take notes. And then I'm like being a nerd about it and it makes it more fun. This first chapter, our main character, Gideon, I thought she was in sort of mil a military that she was trying to escape from, but she's trying to escape to a military. I'm kind of confused. Apparently when she was a baby, her mom was like dead in a spacesuit going to this planet and in the little carrier it was her little baby self so she doesn't feel like she's belong on this planet and I think there's like skeletons there necromancers I don't know there's a lot there's a lot going on she's very quippy very sassy I do love that I wonder if it'll get annoying but I don't easily get annoyed with sass I love it next up is why am I embarrassed about this my dark Romeo honestly okay I'm gonna be dead serious there's three more like on the more intriguing things I'm gonna like more I don't I I mean, this can't be higher than a three star just based on some of the writing and my God, the references, Elon Musk, Hailey Bieber, they're making fun of Olivia Wilde's acting for some reason. Like why, why did you do that? But this is the book that I know as soon as I, well, I'll probably be editing for a few hours and then actually just go to bed. But if I weren't editing, I'd be reading this next because this just seems so mafia romance coded and like, I need that in my life. This is like a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Our Juliet's name is Dallas. She's at some party, they live in this sort of mafia world. It's so funny because mafia romance is always like current day, but they have the misogynistic tendencies of like the 1700s. They always have arranged marriages. They have all these balls that they're always going to. Our girl is there for the food, which I adore. And this dangerous arms dealer, Romeo, is at this party and all of her friends are salivating over him. And she's just like, I want some 
pastry at his table. He sounds like an asshole and he'll probably bug me, but I like that they, it's not that they're like enemies to lovers. She's actually engaged to someone else. It's just the fact that neither of them seem to really give a shit about the other. And I want to see how that turns into love. I am so interested in those kind of stories. Next up is The Whispering Dark. And I'm so sorry, this is not YA. It's like new adult. She's freshly 18 and she's going to college. So it has that like boarding school university setting. And it's also like a fantasy, which I already knew. I said this was paranormal, but for some reason I forgot. Our main character's name is Delaney and she is deaf. She feels like people have been tiptoeing around her her whole life. And she feels like she doesn't want to be this fragile little girl anymore. So she applies for some sort of financial aid to this magical university. And to do this, it's like this whole process. You have to go to a bunch of tests. I think it's like 10 days long, but on the third day they tell her to go home. And so she's thinking that she failed, but then a few weeks go by, she gets a letter and they're like, congrats, you're in babe. She automatically has to study what they choose. It's a part of the deal. And she is going to be assigned to Howe University's God Bowl School of Neo-Anthropological Studies. Apparently it's a magnet for those who dabble in the occult. Ooh. At the end of the chapter, I'm pretty sure she runs into the guy who's mentioned on the flap, which I'm not going to go into because I'm just talking about the first chapter. But I think the most intriguing part of this is that she's talking about how there's this darkness that follows her. And I don't think it's like just depression or something like that. I think there's some sort of entity or like a mind sharing. There's something going on here and I love the sound of it. But I am a little sucker for a boarding school or university setting. Then we have such sharp teeth and this is a perfect choice for Summerween. Oh my God, I actually kind of want to read it in the next couple of days, but I have like three more books on my list to read. This is just so goofy. Our character is sassy. Again, I really like it, but I just like how fun and scary this first chapter was. Our main character's name is Rory and we meet her at the outside of a bar talking to some guy who's clearly in love with her that was like maybe a high school sweetheart or something. She's obviously come home for some event. She drives away from him going to go home and she ends up getting in an accident because it looks like she hit a deer, but then when she goes inspecting it, the deer is like cold and it was clearly dead before she ran it over and she hears this breathing and there's like this monstrous werewolf. Clearly she doesn't know it's a werewolf yet, but oh my god, the thing chases her down, chews her up. That part was really gory and lovely. Like it sounded painful. It sounded scary. I don't get scared easily when I read, but being chased and then actually being like, ripped to pieces a little bit. Oh, that was powerful. And she wakes up in the morning. Some lady's like, oh my God, are you okay? I don't fucking know, call 911. Sometimes characters like that can get on my nerves, but I like her spunk, okay? It says it's a comedic love story. <gasps> anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm very intrigued. And then at number one, which is really no shock, is Martyr. I think I've been really scared to even open a page of this book because although I'm so sure it's gonna be on my top maybe two of the year, just based on how every Everyone has been rating this and the reviews I've seen for it. It sounds so intimidating to me. Like even just the synopsis is written so fancily. Big brain energy. Martyr is a work of gut-wrenching anguish and exquisite consolation. A vision of humanity that is capacious and full of grace. Like some of those words are too big for me to think that this is approachable, but I, I'm so wrong. This reads like I'm listening to someone's thoughts. It's very informal. It's very vulnerable because this character is like very flawed. We got a little snippet of him in 2015 when it seemed like he was really in a bad way, abusing alcohol and maybe prescription drugs. And he's looking for a sign from God. And it's very comical, but also depressing, which is like a winning combination for me. And then the next section we read in chapter one was two years later. Oh my God, this is so funny. He works as an actor in a hospital to like help with doctors who are training to go on as better doctors. I don't know how the whole doctor things work. It's like you graduate, you're a doctor, but then you have to keep being a doctor to become like a real doctor. I'm um, whatever. So every day he gets a little script of like who he is, what he's suffering from, or like what the pa what the doctor has to tell him, like maybe a family member's died and he has to act on a scale of which they tell him to either like be really fucking dramatic or be really chill. And that was just really entertaining. It seems like he's sober, but my God, there was a line in here that I had to underline because it was just so beautiful and I teared up. And just in the first chapter, while I was laughing, 
Like, I don't know. Like, this is gonna be amazing. <sighs> the line that I underlined is, but it's still in me, that doom organ. It's in my throat, throbbing all day, every day. Which doesn't make much sense to you, but if you read it, you will cry. So yeah, I read first chapters of things a lot. I've documented a few of them, but I do them a lot on my own. Sometimes it takes years for me to actually read the books. I still haven't read like all of the books in these videos. So it'll be interesting to see when these actually get read. I feel like these are gonna be soon. The top four. I'm trying to hold that out without being weird about my boobs. Anyway, this is not how I imagine the day going, but I have come out of it feeling uplifted and excited to read. And that's all I can ask as a nerd. Tomorrow, I need to go to the grocery store so I can pick up, well, actual food instead of gas station food that I've been living on for the last few days. But also, I need to bake my treat for this bingo board. Speaking of, Grant and I did watch Village of the Dam last night. I've never laughed harder at a movie, oh my god. This was hilarious and I'm so happy I watched it. It was goofy. There are a lot of differences between this movie and the book that I read a couple days ago, The Midwitch Cuckoos, but there's also a lot of similarities, but oh my god, the movie, the, <laughs> the visuals, the pacing. Surprisingly, the performances were very well done. Also, I feel so bad for Grant or anyone who has to watch a movie with me that was a book that I read. I am so insufferable. <laughs> Every two seconds, I was like, that's not how it was in the book. Actually, pause. This is what happened. Beep, 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 beep. And he's just so patient. He's like, hmm, interesting. There are two days of Summerween left and I have three, maybe four books left that I wanna read. Obviously that's not gonna happen. So I think tomorrow I will leave it up to the jar to pick my read. My options left are Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay. We have Six More Months of June and we have The God of the Woods, which I added after I got in the mail the other day. And then I think maybe I'll check this in. With all that, I feel like I just talked so fast for so long and I'm sorry if I overwhelmed you. Let me know what you've been reading let me know if you've been liking it. Let me know if you've enjoyed this book, if it gets better as the book goes on, or should I just pause forever? And of course, your opinions on any of the books that I did my first chapter or try. That's not how that is. My try a chapter, any of the books that I talked about earlier. All right, I'm off to go edit. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.